Well, COVID cases are starting to pick up in California and around the nation. And as we look to revive and thrive, we're wanting to focus on this this morning. Yeah, well, there is one variant called JN.1, and it was first detected in September. It's now become the most common strain. Mm. Joining us now is Dr. Peter Chin Hong, an infectious disease specialist at UC San Francisco. Good morning. Thanks for waking up early with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay, so let's talk about this latest variant. I know this is something we all think about, especially as we are in that knee deep in that holiday travel season. What is the percentage of cases like right now that are linked to that and how concerned should we be? Well, back in November, it was about uh, 8%. Uh, and right now it's more than 50%. So it's not only the percentage of uh, that it's comprising in the population, but it's the rate of increase that I think that's dizzying to a lot of people to see. So whatever it is, uh, this particular variant is very transmissible. It's kind of killing the competition. It's rising up the charts very quickly. And really, we can talk about COVID all day and we talk about those numbers, but what I want to know, what's the practical matter? Like, where does the rubber meet the road, so to speak? Are we talking about the risk of more hospitalizations in the state of California and maybe going back to some masks? No, I don't think we're going to go back to mass rate. Um, I think that we will see more hospitalizations. We're seeing hospitalizations tick up. Uh, remember, this past year, it didn't really uh, increase tremendously until January and February. That's when COVID peaked. So we're still kind of really crossing our fingers that it will be okay. Um, in terms of what happened last year, we had the viruses that took turns, there was RSV, then it came down, then there was influenza and it came down, and then COVID and came down. But this year, they kind of all are coming together, and that might put a strain on hospital capacity. So, Doctor, what precautions should we take? I mean, is it a good idea to once again go back to wearing a mask indoors and in crowded areas? Well, I, I think it's who you are and who you live with and whether or not it, you can afford to have it disrupt your life. But whatever um, you know, situation you live in, it, the facts are clear that it's very easy to get it. I think most people will, will be okay and navigate it okay. But for some folks, particularly those who are older, uh, those who are immune compromised, uh, that immunity is gonna wear a little bit faster. So unless uh, you, know, you have a new vaccine, uh, it may be harder to escape getting infected. Uh, in the hospital, for example, right now I'm, I'm working this week, uh, we, we have about 27 patients in the hospital, two in the ICU. Most patients are older than 75 and have not gotten the booster and have not gotten Paxlovid. So I think that's the profile of who is being hospitalized. So uh, it's it's kind of been one of those seasons. I, I was just talking about it a few minutes ago. I feel like my kids have had back-to-back -back colds. We've had someone in the house since Thanksgiving, basically, who is kind of battling something. Right. How do we really tell the difference? I mean, should we be testing anytime someone coughs or sneezes? That's a great question. I think it's very, very difficult to tell the difference. Uh, I think uh, for most people, uh, you know, you can tell if it's COVID or not uh, by the home test, but it's impossible to tell if it's flu uh, unless you have a classic symptoms of, you know, being hit like from a dump truck and you have fevers and body aches, but not everybody has that. So I'd say that if you're older, immune compromised, it's probably more important to know what you have because you can have access to early therapy for flu, which is Tamiflu and Paxlovid for COVID. Um, but for everybody else, it may be uh, important only if you are going to hit vulnerable people in your uh, work or life. Uh, and again, you know, it's going to be that that judgment called home. Personally speaking, I think it's really important, uh, if at all possible, to know what you have because you navigate the world very differently um, depending on what you have. Yeah, it's good to be prepared. Well, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, we thank you so much for waking up early and all this very useful and important information. Thanks so much.